Morris since the party was formed. And with everything that Dominic uh, said is absolutely true. He was my leader in 2008 and 2009 when we took on the first battle. And, uh, and I always had a tremendous amount of respect for Morris. He intimidated me just a little bit, but we shared a bus. <laughs> we shared a bus. There was the big LNP bus that we had at the time. Do you remember that? And my friend drove the bus. And it was just the two of us in there. He hitchhiked the ride to the next venue or something. I think we did something with Brave Braveheart, so with Hetty Johnson. And so we hitched a ride on this bus, and it was just cranky, you know, it was just hilarious. And, and I got to know what, what a real guy he is. <laughs> Nothing like a crackety old bus, you know, to, uh, to bond, the, bond, bond the friendship, you know, and, uh, and uh, get to see that, you know, he's just human after all. But, um, no, I mean, I do have a tremendous amount of respect for Lawrence and, and you know, all of our colleagues in, in, uh, in the Parliament, uh, I've got to say, I have, I, I, I'm very privileged and honoured to, for every single one of them. And while I'm speaking of colleagues, I must mention, uh, Tanya Smith would very much have loved to have been here today but she had a Lions Medical Research a Children of Courage Award that she had to go to. So she did ask me to forward her apologies on, so um, if you just accept those. And um, yeah, so um, I suppose there's nothing else to say except to um, you know, introduce this guy here who you already know, and I'll sit down and shut up now. <laughs> Can I just start, ladies and gentlemen, by acknowledging Fire as well, and she is a great and hard-working local member of parliament. And one of the things that I really love about Freya is that she's got the right values which align with the values of the LNP, and I think to be successful you need to understand what you stand for, and you need to understand the organisation that you want to be a part of. And if your values actually closely align, then it's going to be successful. It's not only going to be successful for you, but it's going to be successful and very beneficial for the people that you represent. And I love her values and the way that she actually uh, believes in community, believes in family, and she is a very, very energetic uh, person that uh, has an enormous amount of integrity. And it's about tenacity. I mean, it's not only just about one election, it's about two elections. It's about hanging in there. It's about doing the hard yards. And if you do the hard yards, you'll ultimately be successful. And that's the most important thing because the people that you seek to represent actually know that you're not just a fly-by-night, that you actually are interested in them, that you are really, really dedicated and to do the work between the elections is also something which people uh, recognise and have done that with you as well, Freya, and can I again congratulate you on the work that you do. I think it's been fantastic and to uh, as well Kiong and Shana, can I just say it's been great to count you as friends over such a long period of time. And uh, at a time when we were trying to form the LNP in Queensland, and there are a lot of people out there that were actually fighting against it, pushing against it, saying that they were more than happy to be in some form of a strange, perverse political oblivion uh, because they didn't want to upset the, the norms, uh, the mores that they had come to know and love. And I used to always say, you know, I, I mean, the Labor Party's in government over here, and we're over here in the Liberal Party and the National Party basically uh, fighting each other when we should be fighting them and we believe in the same things. And not only that, there were significant elements within the Liberal Party that were fighting for themselves. So, and it never ever made sense. And at that time, to actually get people to actually think differently and have an outward-looking outward, uh, focus so that people looked at what the, what the electorate wanted, the people who were asking for an alternative wanted. And, it, and you wouldn't believe it, it took so long to get people to actually come to that conclusion. It just makes no sense. Something that's common sense can take a long time to achieve, and I really very much appreciate the work that they did in actually supporting that at that particular stage, as did so many of our wonderful friends in the Liberal and National Party to bring together the LNP in the state. And could I also acknowledge Andrew and wish him all the very best in his campaign. I know that he's working hard, he's out there, he's door knocking, and that's an important part of it as well. You get out there in the community, show energy, show passion, be there, name familiarisation, and talk about the things that people are interested in. And also David as well, in his absence, and I wish him all the very best in his electorate that he's contesting. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here tonight. And this is our central government in Queensland. Uh, this is our parliament. Uh, it is your parliament. 
uh, it is the People's Parliament. And I spent, I've spent basically 20 years in opposition out of a 23 and a half year parliamentary career wanting to get into government so we can make a difference. Because I can tell you there's real hard yards when you're in opposition. And I probably am a little bit sympathetic when people say opposition leaders do this and opposition as well. I know it's like I was an opposition uh, leader at the time when we had 11 members and we were building up from what were the, just the pieces that were left. And sometimes that steals you and it pones you and, and what it does is it also uh, strengthens you along the way and I think it's done that. We are committed and dedicated in Queensland to bring a very pro-business environment in the Newman government. We are very, very much committed to doing things differently because when people voted at the last state election, they didn't vote to leave Queensland the way that it was because the way that it was wasn't sustainable. You know that, I know that. You can't be heading towards an $85 billion debt. That's what the previous government signed us up to. They're not our figures. The previous government signed us up to an $85,000 million debt. And to put that in context, that's like getting $100 notes and sitting them on top of each other, not side by side, not lengthways, but on top of each other, and that goes up 140 kilometres into the sky. Now you can fly satellites around at that level, but they don't come crashing to Earth because you're virtually getting into very low gravity. So that's how far that goes. I mean, that's what it is. And I think most people would be very happy if they had a pile of $100 notes like that. They'd probably be able to live on those for the rest of their lives, many people. I mean, I think, um, what is it, about, uh, about a metre high is getting close to a million dollars. So, but that puts it into perspective. Uh, we didn't have a government that was focused on integrity. We didn't have a government that was focused on good management. And we didn't have a government that had a clear plan for the future. And we have that clear plan. A lot of people might actually be questioning the pace of change in Queensland at the moment. You know, that's fair enough too. But I've spent a lot of time in my electorate talking to people over the last 20 odd years and people say to me, when they change government, nothing ever really changes. Now when I walk around talking to people, they say, we didn't realise things could change so much so quickly. Maybe there's too much change. Well, we have to change. And I think in the context of what's happening around the rest of Australia, I think we're leading the edge when it comes to, to change. And, uh, and, and Kyong said a moment ago, and I think it's very right, there's a, a great deal of fantastic things about Queensland. No one's arguing against that. We argue that this is a fantastic state which has yet to really reach its full potential. And that's the reality of it. And what are the key principles that we bring to running government in Queensland? And I think they're the key principles of you as LNP members, as you as the members of the Business Council. And for me, when I walked into my department on day one, I said to them that we will run government in accordance with five key principles. It will be about smaller government. It will be about better management. It will be about lower taxation. It will be about individual enterprise, that is reward for effort, and it will be about individual responsibility. Because that's how businesses and that's how families operate. If you want to be successful, they're the things that you need to do. We believe in smaller government. Our predecessors believe in bigger government. We believe in less taxes. Our predecessors believe in more taxes. Okay? We believe in reward for effort. They actually believe in a collectivised approach where they take more from the people that were working hard and gave it to a range of people that maybe should have been working a little bit harder. Uh, and so it's fundamentally different. Our approach to doing things is fundamentally different. We believe that you should create an environment for the individual where if they put more effort into what they do, they should be rewarded for it and they should be able to have a chance then to benefit uh, and, 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 and to actually grow from that. And that's what I think the mark of any decent society is all about. Doesn't mean that we shouldn't have regulations. Doesn't mean that there aren't a whole range of obligations in society where we shouldn't be assisting people. That's what government exists for. I mean, I'm the health minister. Uh, I'm not the public health minister as I said, I'm the health minister because in Queensland, You've got public health, which does a fantastic job and delivers good quality of care. And you've got private and not-for-profit providers out there that do a good job. And you have doctors that do a great job out there 
their GP surgeries. We've all got to work together. We just can't have something where I'm just focused on this year uh, and everything else operates in isolation. I have a $12 billion budget. That's an enormous amount. I have the lion's share of any portfolio in Queensland, so I have more than a quarter of the budget that I'm responsible for looking after. And this I think you'll understand as business people. Uh, in the last five to six years, government has increased expenditure on health in Queensland by 43%. Sounds like a lot of money. Should have given us great results. Yet the amount of activity that they've done, the amount of services that they've provided, only increased by 17%. So you can see there's a 26% difference. There's a huge difference between the money they spent and what actually was flowing through. And what we've got to do is to make sure that as we spend more, that we're actually getting more for what we actually spend. It should be keeping in line with it, not actually falling away. And that's the, that's the hallmark of our government now. We're about creating a pro-business environment. Only recently, and the Premier is very proud of this, he walked the streets of his electorate and he actually went door knocking and he knocked on the doors of the panel shops there, uh, the, the mechanical repairers in his electorate, the spray painters there. We've taken away the necessity for them to have licences that ran into thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So the cost of doing business now is less from a government regulation viewpoint in Queensland because we are reducing regulation, we are reducing the cost of business. We are making criminals more accountable for what they do. We are actually getting more out of our dollar. When it comes to our health dollar in Queensland, we have to do it. And it's about innovation, it's about ideas, it's not about bureaucracy. People say, why don't you cut bureaucracy? My health department, my central department, these are the people, the departmental people, not the ones that are delivering the services out there in the community, the doctors and nurses. Our bureaucracy, uh, by the end of June this year, will be about 45% smaller than what it was when I started. It's going to be down from about 2,800 people. Uh, we were planning on 1,600. We might even be down around about 1,400 or even less. And you know what? It's made absolutely no difference except it's working better. And you see, this is what it's about. If you spend, if you spend money on processes and procedures, people will always justify what they do, but it doesn't make your life any better. It doesn't increase the quality of service. It doesn't. And we're going through the same thing with education at the moment, where people are actually hung up on throwing billions of dollars more to an education system under this so-called Gonski, so Gonski uh, recommendation. The United States has increased its expenditure on ed education in the last 30, 30 years by about 300% in real terms, yet the quality of education hasn't got any better. Now, teachers will tell you, and that's not to say money isn't important, but if you put money in there, you need to make sure that you have got the systems that are getting the best value. Teachers will tell you that it's about discipline. It's about, you know, that it's about the curriculum. It's all of those sorts of things that make a difference in the classroom. And what we've got to do is to actually get away from this idea that it's just about money and it should be about what we can do uh, with that money. I'll give you an idea. Just across at the Princess Alexander Hospital, uh, in August last year, I said we're going to ban hospital ambulance bypass. That is the, the practice of ambulances turning up routinely at hospitals only to know that they're on bypass because they're, they've got too much going on or they haven't sort of shared the load around well enough. So then the ambulance goes on to here and that, that ambulance is closed to emergency patients and here and here and here and here. And so it led to the spectacle of people bouncing around in the back of ambulances for eight or nine hours some people die in the back of the ambulances. So I announced we'd ban that from the 1st of January this year. That hospital decided to do it from the 1st of October last year. Not only that, is it completely redesigned the way that it did its own uh, clinical care of patients coming through emergency department. The ambulances coordinated with the hospitals. So when they picked it up, they knew that yeah, the wait time at PA was 30 minutes, but at Logan it was you could get in there at 25, so you might be better off going there. So they knew what was going on. The way that the patient was received, the way the pathology, radiology, everyone was organised, the way that patient was handed over, and the way the patient was discharged. We've improved in six months uh, the journey time for patients by 
So we've now got about 75% of patients going through uh, in less than four hours when it was well and truly you know, less than, less than uh, 60 to 50%. So these are the sorts of things that have been happening out there. Dramatic improvements in recent time. And that hasn't been about money, that's been about smart thinking and saying to the clinicians, how do you, what are your ideas, how can we implement them? The same permeates right across government. But we need to do that now at a national level and that's why it's very important that we have Andrew and David elected so we can have a business focused, family focused government that's elected on the 14th of September this year. And I find it quite incredible that we get these remarkable comparisons now that you know we're doing better than Greece, we're doing better than Portugal, you know, we're doing better than Spain, you know, uh, we're doing better than Cyprus. Well, one would hope we're doing better than all them. Because when John Howard was the Prime Minister and left in 2007, he left $60 billion in the bank and no debt. And I want to, you need to be aware of this, ladies and gentlemen. Six years later, there's virtually no, there's no money in the bank and we've got a $300 billion debt. $300 billion. And so the question is, how do we pay down that debt? And we've got a Federal Treasurer that keeps promising a, a, a budget surplus and he will never achieve that because that's an alien concept for a Labor Treasurer. So, so what he does is he'll come along to me as Health Minister in Queensland, he gives us money and I don't mind if the Federal Government says well we're going to give you less money for this budget year, I might much like it, but we can adjust it when we're setting our budget. He's come along in the middle of the year and took money away that we've already spent. And I mean how harebrained and silly is that? How crazy is it to bring in a carbon scheme in Queensland, in Australia, the impacts on Queensland, where you actually calculate your income based on the European carbon price of $29 a tonne. Okay, you're going to calculate it. You calculate it on where, where, where you think it should be, okay, uh, and then you collect on the reality of it, which is $3 a tonne. Okay, so you're, so you're budgeting on 29, you're collecting three, and you're going to lose between six and $10 billion and you're paying out your compensation based on the highest level. I mean, how crazy, I mean, who could come up with this sort of stuff? And I think that's why people are thirsting for real change and to bring, you know, back the sort of days of good, practical, honest, decent management of our economy that we saw in, uh, in, in between 96 and uh, 2007. I think that's what the population at large is yearning for because I believe in a pro-business approach to doing things uh, where we take responsibility, where we live within our means. Because if you don't live within your means at home, if you don't live within your means at work, then you fail. Why should government be any different? We're in a privileged position because of taxpayers. But there's only so much you can do of bleeding taxpayers dry because the taxpayers don't have any more gov money to give the government just to throw away. So we don't, uh, we don't have any money, we only have your money. We run out of your money, we ask you for more of your money, we take it. And then we run out of your money, then we actually can uh, borrow on your behalf and you have to pay it back. Queensland $85 billion, the interest alone will be over uh, $3 billion a year. So that's $3 billion, that's more than some of our government partners. Just before we can start to run the services, or we have to sell something. That's yours, there's not much of that left. So that's why we do need to have a great, great change and that's why I'm very, very impressed to be here tonight and to actually have the chance to speak to so many people that have similar values to not only myself but our political organisation because business aligns very closely with outside of politics because it is pro-business because business is the basis and innovation and enterprise is the basis of a sustainable, functioning society that's well resourced and is independent. Thank you very much and, uh, and farewell and we look forward to your support from here on in.
so I won't take too much more of your time. However, I'd like to uh, invite uh, the treasurer of the Centenary Branch to come and um, uh, present something to, uh, to Freya Ostapovich as well as Lawrence Springer.